Plant shape and size are two important factors to consider when you are producing ornamental plants in the container. First and basic thing to obtain desirable size is the correct planting time and the proper fertilization. In addition, there are two common practices that growers use to achieve desirable plant shape and size and we will talk about those two common practices. First practice is the cutting. In a scientific term, you can call it trimming. Plants are cut or trimmed multiple times to achieve desired girth, shape and size. Most of the plants are trimmed three to four times in the production season at the six to eight weeks interval. Trimming helps plant to branch out, produce big canopy and stimulates the growth. Plants are sometimes cut at the line holding stage as well. Doing this, they will grow or branch out enough before transplanting and this will reduce the transplant shock and transplant mortality. Other than obtaining desirable shape and size, we cut plants for different various reasons. For example, this is the Cassandra plant that has high infestation of white fly. It's hard to control, we couldn't sell this plant on time and we ended up cutting this Cassandra plant so that we can control white fly better and wait for the right time to shell it. Plants are also cut to obtain the cuttings and for propagation. When you are doing so, you need to make sure your mother plant is healthy, robust, vigor and free of any kind of insect pest. Cuttings can create wounds on the plant surfaces, making them susceptible to the bacterial and fungal diseases and also puts them into the stressful condition. Therefore, special care through the optimal fungicide and fertilizer is needed at this stage. Use of hormone or plant growth regulator is second practice to obtain a desirable plant shape and size. Zivirlic acid is the plant hormone responsible for internode elongation in the branching and plants. And the commonly used plant hormones in the nursery industry is the zirubilic acid inhibitors that reduces the function of zirubilic acid resulting into compact full looking plants and reduce branching. Hormones that are actively absorbed through the stem and lips are fully applied. When you are applying these hormones you need to make sure your plants are not stressed because of any reasons. You should avoid using high metals, copper, mancozeb, for a while when you're applying hormones to the plant. Some hormones are actively absorbed to the roots so they are drenched to the soil. For the better absorption of these hormones, they should be applied early in the morning or late afternoon, cloudy days, and the high humidity condition. These conditions favor the absorption of these hormones into the plant. Some hormones are formulated as a granular form, so these can be applied similar to the fertilizer directly to the container manually. Other than affecting plant shape and size, hormones can have other additional effect. These hormones can increase the leaf thickness and produce this dark green leaf and these dark thick green leaf are less susceptible to the bacteria and fungal infections. In this picture, you can easily tell plants on the left are treated with the gibberellic acid inhibitor hormones that provided dark thick leaf which are less susceptible to the bacterial and fungal infections. Plants treated with gibberellic acid inhibitor hormone tends to retain their flower for a longer time than non-treated plants. Flowering hormones are other kind of hormones that are commonly used in nursery industry. Florizin is commonly used flowering hormone. Benzal adenine, which is artificial cytokine, is also another flowering hormone that helps in producing flower and fruits. If desired branching is not obtained after consecutive cuttings, growers use branching hormones such as cytokine or gibberellic acid to obtain the desirable branching of the plants, especially for the one that are on the trellis. Root hormones or auxins are another kind of commonly used hormones. Most of the time they are used in the cutting, 
you just tip it or you can root drench and you can also put them as a new production that are supposed to produce a healthy robust root system. This is all I had for today. If you have any questions, concerns about the use of plant hormones or cuttings, do not hesitate to put your comments on the video. Thank you very much for watching.